Ladies and gentlemen, you join me here at the beautiful beach of Bandar Al Khiran for the latest edition of First Strike. Luxury car maker Infinity has been hitting the ball out of the park with its new range of vehicles, the Q60, Q50 and the QX80. But the car I have the keys to this week is the Q30, the baby hatchback in the lineup. The Q30 looks undeniably like any other Infinity in the lineup. It's beautiful Japanese designs. But scratch underneath it and you'll find that it has German underpinnings. The headlamps vaguely resemble that of the bigger brother, the Q50, but you have twin prong daytime running LED lights up here. And if you move down, you'll see that it has gloss black accents on the bumper, which is further accented by this halogen fog lamps. What you see here is Infinity's signature spindle grille, and it's large enough to let the turbo breathe. Like I mentioned earlier, everything about the exterior of the car is Japanese. You see these sleek lines? They're what Infinity stands for. It's all very muscular and macho. The design is further complemented by this beautiful gloss black elements on the side skirt. The tail lamps of the Q30 might come across as a bit generic, but I've grown to love the posture of the car, and it is completed by dual chrome-tipped exhausts that are functional. For a regular hatchback, the Q30 actually comes with rather large wheels. You get these 23550 Yokohama tires that are wrapped around 18-inch alloys. Underneath the hood lies a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine that produces 208 horsepower and 350 Newton meters of torque. It is sourced from Mercedes-Benz and I think that's a great move because it's a banging engine. Since this is a hatchback, you get a regular tailgate that opens wide and in the form of a square. Boot space is actually quite admirable for a vehicle that comes with a sloping roof line. But you can add to it with these 60-40 splitting seats that fold flat. Rear seat passengers will get about the same leg and headroom as you would in any other hatchback. But because this comes with a sloping roof line, you also get a chiseled headliner. Sitting in the back is quite comfortable and these seats are really, really soft. Rear seat passengers will also get two AC vents and a 12 volt power socket for your charging needs. The German roots of the car begin to take shape once you step inside. Everything from the steering to the instrument cluster, the dashboard and even the key is derived from the Mercedes-Benz. The gear lever is quite small and non-obstructed and moving over to the top you get several buttons that are inspired but for good cause. Up top you get this beautiful 7 inch touchscreen which is also a step away from Infinity's dual displays. The maps is straight up from a Nissan and it is quite easy to use and slick. You also get apps to play with for once. Space up front is available in plentiful with a lot of leg and headroom but what's even better is the storage compartments. You get two cup holders and this tiny compartment but it comes with two USB ports. The fit and finish inside the cabin is top notch if comparable to the top level Germans. This, for instance, is leatherette but it is stitched and it adds to the persona of the car. Now let's move on to the most interesting part of the car, the drive. Now, I am riding over beach sand and as you can see, there's not much movement. That's because of the high profile tires and that beautifully tuned soft suspension. It's a welcome change from the hatchbacks that you see nowadays because most of them are tuned for sportiness. The two liter engine that we talked about before produces 208 horsepower and 350 Newton meters of torque. Now we are on the twisty bits in GT right now and I can say that the steering wheel is quite light which which sort of fits in with the person of the car. However, it is very responsive, moves and switches directions really quick. The gearbox is a seven-speed auto manual transmission that is very quick to change gears thanks to its dual clutch setup. In these roads that I'm driving on right now, I'm using the paddle shifters. I have to say, it really is lightning quick. Zero to 100 is achieved in about 7.5 seconds. The brakes on the Q30 are actually rather nice. I have to say, it is one of the nicer ones I've tested in a really long time. They're not sticky, but they do have a progressive feel to them. But nevertheless, the time that you actually take a corner is when the chassis comes alive. Traction control and ESP do keep things under check because this, at the end of the day, is a front wheel drive car and take a corner too quick and you will veer off and plow straight forward. The quirks of the Q30 don't quite end there. There are no blind spots around the car, but just for good measure, the buffins are chucked in 360 degree around view monitors 
as well as parking sensors. You also get seven airbags as opposed to six, including knee airbags, by the way, in this model that should protect you in case you're in a crash. The eagerness of the Q30 in the corners is probably what makes this car all the more fun to drive. There's quite a lot to like about the Q30 and it doesn't take much time to fall in love with it. I've driven this car about three or four times before and I have to say, after dropping it back, I will miss it. I'm not sure what's more beautiful, this beach or the car. Infinity's first attempt at making a premium hatchback may be a collaborative effort, but I'll tell you what, it's won a lot of hearts and won money.